Well, good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad that we are transformed in Christ to share the hope of eternal life. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Great to be with you all this morning as we continue on uh, with our journey through the book of Acts today. Uh, we're going to be hearing about a strange uh, vision that, that Peter saw with the sheep coming down with animals on it. What is that all about? We'll talk about it later uh, in, our, in our message this morning. Uh, great to have uh, all of you here, especially a warm welcome to any uh, visitors and guests who are with us. Know that you're always welcome to worship with us here uh, at Holy Cross. Um, we continue to rejoice again in the forgiveness that our Lord has given to us, and we do so at this time by standing and sharing uh, the peace of our Lord. To the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work, 
the works of your hands I sing for joy. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. Your decrees are very trustworthy. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept the record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore we are forgiven. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned, in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with the period. O Lord, as you call people from all nations to worship you, have mercy upon us. O Christ, as you are the bread of life, have mercy upon us. O Lord, as you call us to walk in unity and love, have mercy upon us. We say our gift.
through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our readings. Our first reading, which will serve as the basis for our meditation this morning, is from Acts chapter 11. Now the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, You went to uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter began and explained it to them in order. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, something like a great sheep descending, being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to me. Looking at it closely, I observed animals and beasts of prey and reptiles and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill a deed. But I said, By no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time from heaven, What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times, and all was drawn up again to heaven. And behold, at that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were, sent me to, from, from Caesarea. And the Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen the angel stand in his house and say, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as on us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard these things, they fell silent, and they glorified God, saying, Then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson for this morning is from Ephesians chapter 4. I, therefore, prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower regions, the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, the teachers, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we attained to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In anticipation of the Holy Gospel, please stand as we sing the New Testament canon. <laughs>
Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated as we sing our sermon hymn number 466.
which we heard just a few moments ago. Dear friends in Christ, would you describe yourself as a picky eater? Or maybe a better question would be, would those around you describe you as a picky eater? Are you someone who will pretty much eat whatever is in front of you, or do you find yourself making a lot of special requests of your food, whether it's for a legitimate health challenge uh, that you have, so you, you really do need to watch closely what you eat, or is it just because, well, you'd like food cooked in a different way, or, or, or seasoned in a different way, or perhaps you would just like uh, different food altogether. Say, you know, I really don't want fish tonight. I'd rather have pizza instead. Bet you can never guess who would say that. <laughs> Regardless of where you find yourself, dear friends, on this scale of picky to not picky at all, both can certainly uh, present problems, right? I mean, if you're not picky, let's say about uh, where you're going to go out to eat, and you're always uh, deferring uh, to other people and letting them make the choice, well, the people who need to make the choice all the time, uh, they might get a little bit worn out. Uh, because, in a way, uh, you're not contributing to the decision at all. And so those around you might wish uh, that there was at least a, a, an inkling uh, of an opinion uh, for you to give some kind of direction. Because, after all, the worst thing is when someone says, oh, I don't really care. Uh, about where we go or, or what we're going to eat, uh, you pick, uh, and then you get to the restaurant and they flip flop and say, well, I didn't really want to eat here. <laughs> Picky eaters, of course, present their own challenges too, because if everyone always needs to bend to your preferences uh, and your needs and they don't seem to care, that's the key, they don't seem to care about the restrictions that your needs are placing on other people, well, that gets a little old, too. Well, friends, Piggy Eater Peter uh, is who we have uh, in our Acts lesson today. And he's Piggy Eater Peter not because uh, he just is so concerned about the taste of the food, but rather he's concerned because he's a Jew. And he's a good Jew. And as a good Jew, he still followed uh, the ceremonial food laws uh, that were given back in the days of Moses, as did the other Jewish people. If you look back, especially uh, at the book of Leviticus, uh, this is after the people of Israel, they've been, they've been led out of Egypt, and you see all of these rules and regulations that the Lord had given to the people of Israel, rules that today uh, might make us you know, scratch our heads a little bit. You know, why are we doing this exactly? What is the purpose of all this? Uh, and having never been a, a Jew, I, I don't know uh, about the particularities of all of them, but I do know this. They were given to set the people of Israel apart. They were given and followed to show that they were not just any other people group, not worshipers of false gods, but worshipers and followers of Yahweh, the one true God, the God of Israel they were different than the rest of the world in who they were, in how uh, they lived, and in how God had called them uh, to himself, uh, chosen to work out his salvation plan through them and for them. These ceremonial laws then that they were following included food laws of what animals were clean uh, and unclean to avoid. And you can read all about that uh, uh, in Leviticus chapter 11 later on today, uh, if you would like. Uh, so this is all swirling around in, in, in Peter's mind when he has this vision that is given to him by the Lord. He's in the, the city of Joppa. It's a Mediterranean coastal city about 30 miles south of Caesarea, uh, which we're going to hear a little bit more about soon. And he's praying, and all of a sudden he sees this giant sheet. Uh, that comes down out of heaven with all of these unclean animals on it, animals that you would see listed in Leviticus chapter 11. And then he hears this absolutely shocking command by the Lord. Rise, Peter, 
kill and eat. It just goes against every bone in his body. It goes against everything that he has ever been taught. And old and pastor Peter, as always, responds immediately saying, By no means, Lord. I'm not doing that. I've never eaten anything unclean or common. So the Lord has to put him in his place and tell him, well, God is being clean. Do not call common. Three times this happens. You see the story today that we have uh, where Peter is recounting this vision of this sheet of unclean animals where the Lord is telling him to do something radical, to kill and eat. It's something a lot bigger uh, than just a Jew learning something radical about food, that now other foods are declared clean. As an aside, Owen, it is great. It's great that we can eat bacon. It's great. <laughs> But there's something that's so much more important than bacon uh, uh, than that. You see here, if we look at this story uh, in its totality, uh, it actually goes back uh, to the start of Acts chapter 10. Uh, here in chapter 11, we're actually getting kind of a summarized uh, cliff notes kind of version. Um, but if you consider the length of the whole story from chapter 10 through chapter 11, if, if length was the was what symbolized what was most important, well, then this story would be the most important in the book of Acts. Because everything that we have been hearing up to this moment, uh, it's been leading to it. And everything that goes afterwards flows from this moment. Everybody needs to know how important this is, not only of this vision, but what happens as a result. Now, before we go back a little bit into chapter 10, we need to identify two problems that we're being dealt with here. Uh, and the first is what we heard at the beginning uh, of our Acts lesson today in chapter 11. The first is that the Jews are saying uh, of what Peter did in chapter 10 that made them so sort of upset. And they're upset because he went and he ate with Gentiles, with non-Jewish people, and that would make him unclean. So we hear about this in Acts, as well as in a couple of, of Paul's letters, how this was really a struggle uh, for the Jewish people. What, what, they, what they're supposed to do uh, with their Jewishness, uh, now that they're Christians, uh, and where do Gentiles fit into that picture? And it goes the same as well for Gentiles and how they're giving up things from their own way of life into the, the Christian story uh, as well. We've been talking about that in our, in our Bible study on Tuesday morning with the Corinthians. Um, so right now, in chapter 11, though, uh, it's very clear what the Jews think. Uh, being Jewish and doing the ceremonial things is still very important. And number two, the Gentiles, they don't fit into the salvation picture at all. Uh, that's what they're thinking. So that's why Peter's vision of what happens as a result of this is so important. But that leads to the second problem, the problem of idolatry. And we need to talk about this just for a minute or so because before we get into what happens after Peter's vision. You see, when we think about idols, um, you know, we usually think about carvings uh, or statues and, you know, people worshiping those things and say, and then we find ourselves saying, well, well we don't do that as, as Christians. We worship the triune God. Uh, you know, we're all good. Although I think that our church may have a bit of a unique challenge, um, uh, especially with outsiders who come in here, they might be given the impression, if, if they don't understand the Christian faith, uh, you know, they might say, hear us say, well, we worship the one true God, and they might beg the difference, say, well, well what, where are all these guys up here? Are you worshiping those? Are those like your idols or something uh, that, you're, that you're worshiping? Uh, and we would kind of explain that no, no, it's all the symbolism that the four gospel writers and Jesus is elevated and we got the Father over there and the Spirit over here and we worship the triune God and we, we would explain all of that. Um, and most people, I think, that would be, we, would be satisfied. Uh, so we don't worship the, the altar or the statues, but we are, but we are on the other hand, sinners uh, who have a habit of creating idols all the time. Uh, the explanation of the first commandment is that we shall have no other gods. Uh, uh, and, or the, that's the first commandment, and the explanation is that, that we sh should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. So whenever we fear, love, or, or trust uh, in anything else more than God at any time, that's idolatry. You can take your pick. Your money, your job, your skill set. 
personality or the people who you look up to, your phone, your boat, your home, you get the picture. It's so easy for us to commit idolatry. And that's what Peter was walking into in Acts chapter 10. We're told that there is a centurion in Acts 10, the head honcho of the region in Caesarea. He's named Cornelius. He is the guy in the place that represents the emperor's authority in the region of Israel. But he's also this, what Acts 10 tells us. A devout man who feared God with all his household and gave alms generously to the people and prayed continually to God. One day Cornelius uh, has this vision of an angel who tells him to send men down to Joppa to get Peter and to bring him back to him. Peter was told, uh, or Peter were told is, is initially uh, perplexed by this vision that he had had regarding the, the sheep and the animals. I mean, who wouldn't be? Uh, but the Holy Spirit speaks to him, and he guides him to go with these men who are sent to him uh, and to go back to Cornelius and his household. And again, this is this is a really big deal. This lowly Jewish guy going in to the political seat of Rome in this place. And it's interesting because of what he would have seen uh, as he entered the city. You see, the Jewish historian uh, Josephus talks about how in Caesarea, uh, Maritime, there were these two large statues. There was a statue to Caesar in one area, and there was a statue to the goddess Roma in another area. Uh, these, these were two massive statues. At one point, uh, apparently, there was a, a marble foot that was brought out of the harbor there in Caesarea that measured five to six feet in length. If the foot is five to six feet, you can imagine how big uh, these statues were. Uh, this goddess Roma, she symbolized uh, the power of the city of Rome uh, and the, the Roman state as a whole. And so yes, Peter, uh, as he's walking into Caesarea, going with these men to the house of Cornelius, he is walking right into the heart of Roman rule and Roman idolatry. And as he's greeted by Cornelius, uh, where he first tells him, you know, hey, don't bow down to me, I'm a man too. But then he tells him how, you know, hey, I'm really not supposed to be here. <laughs> you know, I'm a Jew, uh, and, you know, I'm becoming unclean by being here with you. But then he tells him this, that God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. So when I was sent, I came without objection. I asked them why you sent for me. You see, that's the point of the whole vision that Peter had. Salvation is for the Gentiles, too. So then, after that, as Peter's had this, this realization, he's connected the dots, now he's here, he's in the household of Cornelius, and he more or less preaches a sermon that's pretty much like uh, the sermon he gave at Pentecost. And as Cornelius and the people there are hearing the word, we're told that the Holy Spirit falls upon them. And they believe that they're baptized, welcomed into God's family. Isn't that amazing? That would be heard that, that sermon on Pentecost, uh, that, was, that was preached to Jews. Jews from all over the area who were gathering together in Jerusalem. A few weeks ago, we were told uh, that the Holy Spirit fell on the Samaritans. And now, Peter's message in Caesarea is about proclaiming Jesus in a place where Caesar thinks he's in charge. You know, the Romans had declared Caesar uh, to be a god uh, because Rome was so prosperous, all about the stuff, all about the power. Uh, we never knew that because any of our politicians and elected officials do we. But Peter preaches that Jesus is in charge. He is the Lord. He is the greatest benefactor of all, forgiving sins through his cross and the empty tomb. And he is Lord not only for today or for 30 or 40 years, however long the emperor's reign might be, but for eternity. Yes, Cornelius and his entire household receive the word, and the Spirit comes into the midst of Roman idolatry, and the rule and reign of God has just invaded the most powerful country known on the planet. Friends, what about us? Going back to, to the beginning,
beginning of the story, it's you know good to think about uh, Peter uh, not being so picky about things. Uh, it's good for us to avoid the pitfalls of, of being too picky and not too picky at all when it comes to you know uh, being involved in the church's life in contributing our ideas and influence of dedicating our time and effort while also still being open to new ideas and, and fresh voices. But as people who are Gentiles, I don't think we have anybody here who's ethnically uh, Jewish or, or, or was formerly religiously Jewish. Uh, it's important for us to realize that in this story we're, we're a lot more like Cornelius, right? And, and his household. We are living lives uh, of incredible abundance. Uh, we live in the most prosperous and powerful country in the whole world. Uh, and we are intertwined uh, in a system that so often is quite idolatrous, uh, even to the point of injustice. Because so often, even the good that, that we want to do, it, it ends up making a mess of the world, right? We try to do something good, it messes something up. But I want you to think about this. Despite our making a mess of things, God shows up anyway. He comes anyway with his blessings in Christ for you. And then you are equipped and you get to go and love and serve your neighbor freely because Christ has set you free. <clears throat> yes, there's suffering in this life. Yes, there's trials. Yes, there's challenges and difficulties. And many of those can come to your mind and mine as well. You, nevertheless, dear friends, rejoice. You are living under the blessing of Almighty God and His forgiven, life-eternal purpose for you in His Son. Nothing could be better than that. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all of us, and you keep your hearts and lives in this Christ Jesus to life eternal. Amen. At this time, we collect our tithes and offerings for the work of the Lord in this place. Thank you.
We also pray for, uh, for CJ uh, as she's having uh, surgery uh, this week. CJ, we pray that that surgery goes well for you uh, on Tuesday. Are there any other prayer requests before we go to our Lord in prayer? Okay, one note about our prayers this day is we're singing a, a hymn that's a one-verse hymn after each uh, prayer. It's uh, number 780, uh, O Lord, hear my prayer. I encourage you to open up your hymnal to that uh, at this time. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs, calling upon our gracious God.
laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we go with the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for a closing hymn, number 821.
us out of every nation, has redeemed us by his blood. He's come to all of us Gentiles, uh, and we praise his holy name on this day, redeemed in his forgive, forgiving love. God be praised. Uh, just a few words of announcements this day. We've got uh, Jurdafet. The time is nigh. It's just about here. Uh, we've got the sign-up sheets in the back. If you can help in any kind of way uh, next uh, Saturday, uh, that would be great. And also, during uh, this week, we have three work days, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, to help get things ready. Uh, if you're able uh, or desire to bring uh, baked goods uh, for, uh, for the, the sale as well, uh, those are, of course, welcome. Uh, do we usually just, do they do we bring those the day of? I'm trying to remember, just the, the morning of? Oh, okay, so Thursday, Friday, or, or the day of on Saturday. So um, we also need help. Uh, if we could have a few people after the service, we need to get the, um, the sign posted uh, out in front of church here. So if anybody can stay for just a couple minutes to help with that, that would be appreciated. And I think that's all. Are there any other announcements? It lower, so they lower the temperature to 82. You know, uh, Krista and the boys aren't here today. They've gone up to Wisconsin for a few days to see some additional family. They're going to bring Wisconsin back. That's good. That's good. Always good when we get Wisconsin weather in the middle of August. Yes, Betty. Uh, Please let uh, myself or Betty know if uh, if you're planning to come for lunch. Well, just raise your hands right now. Oh, raise your hands right now if you're going to come for the for Wednesday for lunch. One, two, three. No, I won't be here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Carry the three, seven. About ten. Ten. That's what I'm counting. Yes. Yeah. Any other announcements? Okay. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank uh...